gear up for this new discipline because it's going to drive a lot of what you do going forward. Welcome to WorkSpan TV. I'm Ryan Johnson from World at Work. I have two guests in the studio today. We're going to talk about the evolution of workforce analytics. And I've got Brian Kelly from Mercer. I also have Hag Nalbantian from Mercer. I want to welcome you both. Brian, let's start off with you. Uh, analytics obviously has been a, a very big subject in the last few years. A lot of talk about big data, uh, right? Uh, tell me where analytics has been coming from in the last few years, and then we'll get into eventually where it is today and where it's going. Analytics truly has been top of mind for business executives and HR leaders, let's say over the last three to five years. The growth of software as a service technology platforms, especially in the talent space, has made it easier for organizations to actually capture quite granular data about their workforce. This in turn has allowed it organizations to more easily get into workforce analytics. The discipline though, the concept of workforce analytics has been around for, for quite some period of time. What have you seen, Hank? We've seen a very dramatic evolution. We, we started our uh, workforce analytics, workforce sciences group, as we call it, back in the early 90s. And at that time, um, the decision we had to make as an organization was to figure out how we could best help our clients make more economic decisions uh, about their workforce, bring more of a business perspective to, to their workforce. And the, and the choices were, to go the broad benchmarking route where you made comparisons across companies and made your choices as an individual company based on best practice experience elsewhere, or uh, alternative two, view the human capital decision as another form of asset management decision, which means it's very much about you as an organization. What it is you need to secure in and from your workforce to accomplish your business goals and then determine if your policies and practices are actually achieving those outcomes. That's where the origin of analytics um, uh, can be found beyond the benchmark comparisons that, that have been around for you know, 20, 25 uh, years or more. It's, it's really looking at the ability of an organization to analyze the running record of their workforce and performance data to understand if they're getting the right assets and those assets are doing the right things. When we started, if one in 10 companies had the data you need to do sophisticated workforce analytics, I'd be exaggerating. Today, if uh, uh, one in 10 doesn't, I would be exaggerating. Well, let me just poke on that a little bit. Hey, uh, you know, the, the promise of big data, the vision that you've laid out is obviously it's grandiose, it's brilliant, it, I'm, I'm eager to see it when it happens, but are we really there yet? I mean, and I can imagine, you know, the, the statistic you just cited, very common in larger companies with huge headcounts and giant budgets. What about the smaller organizations? I mean, is there a bifurcation between those two, or are you seeing it today virtually across all organizations? There's no question that it's the larger, more complex organizations that are moving in this direction more because they have so much at stake. For most organizations of that nature, this is the biggest single investment they make and it's the one they know least about. They have so many different specialized uh, parts of the HR function, and parts of the business uh, that affect the workforce that it's hard for them to know even what they're doing in reality, let alone know what the consequences of their decisions are. So yes, larger, more complex organizations need it more. But uh, even smaller organizations, we find, are beginning to feel that in order, it's almost like basic hygiene, in order to uh, conduct a respectable operation, they need to know some basic things about who is in their workforce, what the workforce is doing, who's staying, who's leaving, who's advancing, and going blind and going just on hunches or going on even your leader's convictions is no longer enough in this global economy. The fact that technology tends to be the commodity. Price points are quite low and deployment strategies are very different. If you're starting a firm now and have 500 employees and you've been around for three years, chances are you've never purchased software and installed it on your office locations. You subscribe to it via the web. And it's easy to bring data together and analyze information. And so now companies have lowered their overall cost of IT, of capturing data about their employees, and they're choosing to deploy that capital in the analysis of their employees. Size certainly is a proxy for complexity of data and also how big the lever is, right, in terms of cost savings or revenue enhancement. What we're finding, organizations about the 500 mark really have 
if not functions dedicated to this, an area focused on understanding the interplay between workforce and business results of the organization and spending significant dollars, again, proportionate to the size of the organization, on answering these questions. It's challenging to do. It's a relatively new and emerging science or discipline, but there are organizations that have been doing this for quite a period of time that are more than willing to share success stories. And I think that's where you start to see the acceleration. If I'm a, a compensation uh, analyst or maybe compensation manager or director and uh, maybe one of the viewers here, world, yeah. typical World of Work member, can you give us maybe two or three things that are companies thinking about analytics, looking at analytics, but maybe not quite taking the plunge? What, what are the first two or three things that that person should do? I think the first thing they should do is raise their hand. Raise their hand and start asking questions within the HR function are we doing this work? If we are, who's doing it? If we're not, why not? And get involved. So often folks stay in their silo and continue to do the analysis that they're comfortable with. They don't raise their hand and take a look around and see what's going on. That's the first thing. The second thing I would say is try something new. The traditional analysis that you've been conducting certainly has its place within the organization and will continue to be valued. But really emerging workforce analytics has to do with coming up with hypotheses. You necessarily don't know the answer to the question that you're asking. You just have the question. I think the willingness to fail, the willingness to go down a dead end and say there's no correlation here, there's no causation, this isn't something that we, we should continue to look at, is part and parcel of building an analytics function. And so often within a corporate structure, especially large organizations, it's counterintuitive to raise your hand and say, one, I want to try something new, and two, I might fail at it. But it's the second and third iteration is where you start to see success. And I, I think that's counterintuitive for many folks from a career standpoint. You know, workforce analytics is not just a numbers game. It's, it's not just a technology uh, play. Uh, it really is more than anything about the lens you apply to all the data that are now available, workforce data, performance data. We've seen organizations uh, really get stuck um, initiating a major effort, pulling together lots and lots of data, and then finding themselves unable to extract any intelligence from those data. There's no story to tell. You can't dump a boatload of uh, workforce information on your leadership and expect them to be happy about it. They want to understand what is it telling us? What is it telling us about this uh, great asset that we have and the things we need to do to, to make that asset perform even better than it is? Let me, let me just pose to each of you now a 30 second answer if you can. Where is workforce analytics going to be in 10 years, Brian? I think it's the face of HR. I think we've automated every single thing that we can automate. Technology exists to enable our function. At the end of the day, if you're not focused on the value your talent, your workforce brings to your organization, you can look at the cost side or you can look at the, the strategic impact from your business plans, you're really not practicing HR. Hey, where's it going to be in 10 years? The idea that talent is front and center of global competitiveness for uh, most large uh, global organizations means that their ability to succeed in the global competition requires that they've got their hands around this most important asset that, that they manage. The future of workforce analytics is delivering intelligence from data in the same way that the marketing scientists deliver intelligence about customers from their data, the way financial analysts deliver intelligence about uh, lenders and borrowers from those data. They wouldn't think about making decisions without that fact-based workforce analytics, I think, will be in the same place in a decade. Gentlemen, thanks for your time. Two guests from Mercer. We've been talking about the evolution of analytics in the workforce. For WorkSpan TV and World at Work, I'm Ryan Johnson.